is January 11, 2012. Tragically, it is the 10th anniversary of the first prisoners going to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, which has perpetuated the worst of human rights violations uh, in this era. Interfaith communities united for justice and peace will be ceaseless in our efforts to continue to bring this to the people's attention, to demand that they look deep in themselves, that they know that this is un-American, that what is happening every day in the name of the United States is un-American, that we call on the better angels of our nature to stand for truth, to speak truth to power, to condemn these immoral conduct that's happening. We now know that the United States has presided over a prison which they attempted to put beyond the reach of the law, where uh, over 700 men have been held uh, against their will, without lawyers, without charges. Today we know that over 100 of them remain, uh, even though they've been cleared and are innocent of any crimes and any acts of terrorism. We're here to condemn that, to demand that Guantanamo Bay be closed and that no other Guantanamo Bay be reopened in its place. My client, Mohammed Ghanem, is from Yemen. He was in Afghanistan before 9-11. And after 9-11, he turned in his borrowed rifle and attempted to return to his home country of Afghanistan, of Yemen. But before he got there, he was arrested. No rifle in hand, no ill will toward the American people. Mohammed has been in Guantanamo for 10 years. He was one of the first prisoners there 10 years ago this month. Some of those 10 years have included torture and severe abuse. Torture that is so bad that I am prevented by the government from discussing with you, the public, what my client has undergone. A society's level of humanity or inhumanity can be read by looking at how it treats those it incarcerates. By that measure, we as a people and as a society are in terrible trouble. The prisoners who are tortured in prisons abroad and here at home, some of whom have died under torture and some driven to end their suffering by suicide, bear the weight of our collective souls on their sullied bodies. I am a criminologist and have studied, taught, and written about prisons and jails here and abroad for many years. There are startling parallels between how much more savage domestic prisons have become and the impact of the so-called war on terror on our world. There is a general degrading underway of public administration and political leadership that emanates from the very highest levels of the U.S. government. My client has been in Guantanamo Bay since 2002 and has never had a trial. He's accused of attempting to fight U.S. in Afghanistan, not with any crime against a civilian. He was subjected to torture in Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan and again in Guantanamo Bay. Torture that was approved at the highest levels of our government. Make no mistake, we will regret this era in our nation's history, just as we regret the Japanese internment and the McCarthy era. It's ironic that we do stand here 10 years later still looking through that looking glass, right? Through that looking glass where a president can make promises and four years later, later not live up to those promises, where people can still live under horrendous conditions of torture and inhumane treatment. When you dehumanize a whole race of people, a whole religion of people, a whole area of the world, with just because they're brown, that you can treat them like they're not human, treat them that, like they don't exist, that this is somehow justified. And this is a war of color, because red, white, and blue barbarism is not justified. But this is not just about my community of faith. It's not about my community of faith that's being affected by all of this. It's about my community of conscience. All of us standing here together, rising up together to 
say enough is enough. No person in the world, especially by the U.S. government, especially by the American people, should be treated as such. We are a nation of people of democracy who stand up for what's right and to promote justice around the world. Not a nation of barbarism, not a nation of injustice. I'm Victoria Don. I'm one of the attorneys working with Paul Hoffman to represent Rahim Abdul Razak al -Jango. He's a young Syrian man who was falsely imprisoned in Guantanamo Bay for approximately seven years. In 2002, Mr. Janku was liberated from Sarpuza prison, where he had been incarcerated and tortured by the Taliban. However, he was then mistaken for a terrorist by U.S. forces and transferred to Guantanamo Bay. In Guantanamo, Mr. Janku suffered brutal interrogations, beatings, prolonged stints in isolation, sleep deprivation, exposure to extreme temperatures, and was driven to multiple suicide attempts. We are currently helping Mr. Janko fight an uphill battle in the civil court to gain some redress and justice. It is important for our court system to acknowledge and allow civil justice and compensation for victims like Mr. Janko, who were unwittingly swept up in and paid a terrible price for our nation's overzealous war on terror. It is fitting that we are here in Los Angeles on the 10th anniversary of Guantanamo, spearheading a movement with people across the country to call for the closure of Guantanamo and the end to practices of torture. During these same past 10 years, the greater Los Angeles area has been home to the largest population of torture survivors in the United States. And we, at the Program for Torture Victims, witness the devastating effects of torture every single day. We see men, women, and children from all over the world whose lives have been shattered by torture. Some have been beaten, kicked, subjected to electrical shock and waterboarding. Some raped, burned, suffocated. Some incarcerated, deprived of sleep, food, and water. Some witnessing the brutal torture and killing of their own family members. Most have lost everything, their home, their jobs, their money, their, their health, everything but the physical and psychological scars of torture. And I'm representing law school students from Southwestern, UCLA, Loyola, and UC Irvine. In law school, we are taught to look closely at the facts when analyzing a case. We know that by taking a close look at the facts, only one logical conclusion can be reached. Not only is Guantanamo a tragedy against human rights and justice, but it is also utterly unnecessary and impractical. We do not want to be associated with injustice. We want to be known as the generation of law school students who stood up for human rights and justice, even for those the government seeks to portray as monsters. Now a new struggle has been given to us with the current passage of the NDAA, and that struggle is now to prevent the spread of military detention right here in the U.S. Thank you very much. We now know that military officers were trained in the American prison system and then transferred to Guantanamo Bay, Bagram, Iraq, and Afghanistan to perpetuate the experimentation and the abuse that they learned and trained here in the United States. And we don't have to look far from this place to know that there has been brutal treatment, torture, and cruel punishment of individuals in the LA Men's Central Jail under the LA Sheriff's Department. This is real, this is all around us, this is not a far-off, distant problem.